how to create a portfolio. And it's very good to know this because you can do it for very minimal cost. I'm all about saving money. Um, here's a commercially made portfolio, and it's very nice. But just take a guess how much do you think one of these costs? It's 11 by 14. Eric? Cane dollar? More. 15. More. 25. 20. 20 dollars on regularly priced. I happen to wait till the 50% off commercial, not commercial, coupon comes out. Then I buy it for 10. Because to me it's worth $10. But $20 is a lot of money. But making one is very simple. Wallpaper stores are always giving away their discontinued um, samples. Oops. We have a few possible things. And the nice thing about wallpaper is it's sort of waterproof. It makes them less, makes them more durable. The other nice thing about these is they're hard cover, which when you're carrying, you know, pieces of paper that you've done work on, it protects them, keeps them nice and flat. So here's one that's not completely finished. It's sort of partially finished, but I'll show you how you can do this. And I'm going to do it on a small scale so I don't have to recut the large pieces. <coughs> this stack is all the material that I cut from these big pieces of cardboard, again, free from BJ's. They throw this stuff out and it costs them money to dispose of it. So they're more than happy to give it to people. They're always curious, what are you going to do with it? You know, we use it for a lot of things, like that mask there. Cardboard's a really handy material. So the first thing I want to do is cover the cardboard, because obviously we don't want it to be, you know, look like cardboard. And I'm using this one. And when we get to our lesson about pattern, maybe we'll talk about this pattern might be called damask. It's sort of organic and, you know, thematically based on nature. So patterns sometimes have names like plaid, tartan. Um, what's the one for that checkerboard that looks like? Looks like um, a picnic table. It ends with a G. Can't think of it right now. So anyway, I'm cutting off a piece to cover both of my pieces of cardboard, and I don't need it to completely cover it because we're going to use this material, which I I'm going to refer to as my binding cloth. Artist books or any books that are bound. This part of the book is, known, is called the spine of the book, and usually it's cloth, called binding cloth, that sort of holds, holds the whole thing together. And for this, I like this black side, but you might choose to use the blue side, depending on, on your uh, material. So I'm going to cut this two into a wide strip. I like it when you, when you can go, you know, sometimes it catches. This is sort of like wrapping a present, really, very similar to it. And I think I'm not, I'm not going to be penny wise, pound foolish. That's an expression for cutting the material too small and not having enough. Sometimes you need to be conservative can be detrimental, if that makes any sense. So first I would take one side and I begin to wrap my material around it, my wallpaper, my cover material. And this part is where it overlaps a little bit. I want to make sure I'm making that crease on there. So that when I open it up, I can see that I've made this little rectangle there. And that is excess. I don't need that. So what I want to do is, let's say, let's do that so you can see it. That's the corner. I want to make the corner cut off. But I do want to leave that little triangle there because then 
it will join together neatly and make the miter joint, sort of like what we did with the fairy houses. We came up with that idea of the miter joints, having things that are in an angle. And this overlaps a little right there. But you see that? That's because I cut the corner off. If I cut it too much, then I'm going to have a hole. So it's kind of important to not do, to do too much or too little. And again, the best way to make sure of that is to plan it ahead of time so that you're leaving a little, a little material there. lines up for you. It still may overlap a little bit, which you can trim later. Okay. All right. Glue, which we always store in these containers, and the foam brushes. I'll wash them at the end because it takes a little bit of time to get all the glue out of them. But Again, you don't have to worry about these tables. They're great for just working messy. That's what's nice about this room. Having a space where you, can, you don't have to worry about. But you definitely want to get it on the edges of that paper in a little bit. I mean, I'm not, I'm not overdoing it. In other words, I'm not saturating. Remember, we use that word for the watercolor. Here's another application. I don't want this piece dripping with glue, but I do want it to have a coat of glue. So I'll place my piece there. And this takes a second, you have to hold it down, smoothing it out. Tuck that in. And again here. Okay, and on this side, that's one cover. I would do the same thing to the other side, but I'm not going to take the time to do that. I'm just going to show you what would happen next. Taking the binding cloth, I would wrap the two covered pieces. Does everybody realize that I, I'm not going to take the time, but I would cover this side the same? Yeah. And see how there's this extra uncovered piece? That's fine because we would use that and glue the binding cloth down. Also, you want to leave a space in the middle. Why do you think you want to leave a space in the middle, Will? So you can close it? Yeah, so that when you start putting stuff in there, see this space is about the size of your, the width of your finger. There's room for all the stuff that you're going to be carrying in it, all the work. Here's one that has some work in it. And this also shows how you can finish it off with another cover in the inside. So you get kind of fancy with it. And we have books, too, with different materials. I would say for the initial covering, use the rolls because they're nice and big. But then the books, you could do something different with a pattern. So once again, spreading this glue on. Really making sure I have it on the edge of where I want it to go, and then making sure it's making sure it's meeting that side, and then I'd wrap it this way. Now sometimes the other thing is you with the larger pieces, you might have to use two pieces of the binding cloth, but this is nice and small, so it's quick. And then then I have to do something like this to push it in to that little crease, making it, it's using your hands and too bad you didn't have more, more than two hands for this project. But 
Sometimes you can help each other too. Looks like I need a little more glue. It's not really making that connection there. So I'll do it on both pieces. This and that. Maybe the glue kind of got absorbed in there. But I would hold it into that, kind of force it in to the crease and hold it down for a second or two. One, two, three. Don't you do it? Five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There. Now it's holding. Same over here. See how that kind of gives it a finished look. Now obviously if I had it on the other side it would look the same. But then once you have this covered you can decorate it your own. You can put your own touch on it. You can even put a piece of drawing paper on there. There's so much you can do to personalize things. Another thing that I've seen people do with this is once they make the inside cover they create a little folder here. So they can insert things that are smaller. And that's it. So any questions on that? Thank you. You can check.